Hey, it's Christine Horn. Welcome back to a Work With Me Wednesday. This is part two of how to use a virtual assistant to help grow your business or your career. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Listen, if you are not subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell at the bottom so you don't miss a video. Hey, I am Christine Horn, professional working actress of 20 plus years. I'm a life and career coach for actors and I'm the founder of Hollywood Bound Actors, an amazing community of, for actors around the world. And I have started sharing some tips about uh, how I'm building my uh, six-figure business. And one of the things that comes up a lot is getting help. So this is part two of how to use a virtual assistant. And last episode, and if you missed it, you can click the little notification thing above here and you can watch that video. But today I just wanted to really help clarify how much you pay virtual assistants, where to find them, and go a little deeper on that, and some good practices in the hiring process. So stay with me. Let me just be very clear. You know, I have had some doozies. <laughs> You know, it is really trial and error. I don't think it's a whole lot different than, you know, trying to hire somebody in person. I think the difference is when you have someone in person, if you're running a business, is that you can feel people's energy a bit more. They're right in front of you. You can see what their whole body looks like, you know, as far as like how they show up with clothing and are, are they polished or professional. With a computer uh, interview, sometimes you don't always get to feel that. And sometimes you don't even talk to the person. Sometimes it's just uh, through text and through email messaging. So years ago, there was a website called Elance. Then Elance blended with Upwork.com. I'll put the link to Upwork below. So I'm gonna talk more so about um, Upwork real quick because Upwork is where I like to find my long-term virtual assistants. And long-term could be a month up to five Plus years. It just depends on the project and what they're working on. If you're hiring someone to build a website for you, you might only work with them for three months, but it's a significant probably amount of money involved. So the way Upwork works, and I'll just explain that quickly, is you create a job posting for free. You create an account, you create a job posting for free, basically saying what you're looking for. So it could be so seeking social media manager for a blogger, right? It could be that. And get really specific in what it is that you want the person to do. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make in the hiring practice is not being specific. You assume that people will just read your mind and they can't. I want you to remember that you are now in the, the employer. You are the CEO of your business. You are the CEO of your career. So you have to make think about how you would want to be taught, how you would want to be trained if you were starting a new job or applying for a job. So you put a post on Upwork. I always tell my friends, because my friends always call me to get help on hiring because I've been so successful at it. And they'll say, you know, what should I do? And the main thing I can say is be as specific as possible. You know, you have a lot of characters, a lot of space that you can write specifically about your business. If you can leave links, if, and if it's not a, a full-time business, maybe you're an actor or creative, leave links to your YouTube or your website so they can get a sense for you and a sense for what it is that you're asking them to do. Now, the way Upwork works is they will ask, do you want to pay hourly or do you want to play a, pay a flat rate? Oftentimes you won't even know. There have been jo jobs that I've hired for. I'm like, I don't even know what the going rate is for this. So the cool thing about Upwork, you can just scroll through Upwork and search for freelancers. Maybe you're searching for social media marketers. Maybe you're searching for a video editor, website designers, you name it. Just put a search at the top, maybe before you even put your post to see what the range is for that type of job. Because sometimes people won't even apply apply to your job because either maybe the rate's too low. And that could just be because you didn't know what to put. That's very common. And if I don't know, sometimes I'll even say it in the in the job description. Not sure what the rate is on this, gonna put this as a flat rate and then we can discuss. I think another big tip for you is to be aware of certain countries. And I'm not gonna say them out loud on this video, but just know I want you to make sure you read the reviews just culturally, there's sometimes a difference in how people communicate. So on Upwork 
And on even on Fiverr.com, they'll tell you if the person is a native English speaker or a whatever the language is, if it's a second language or if they just, sometimes people say they're native speakers, but then they can read, but they can't write. And so it doesn't matter if it's, if it's just a creative job where they don't have to type anything, maybe that's fine. But if they have to write any kind of text on your screen or do anything where they're interacting with your customers and their English is not good and you are American and you're trying to make sure that people understand, just be aware of that. So you may wanna do a test to make sure that they um, can talk like, like, like you and talk clearly and complete accurate sentences. And I know I'm not going to pinpoint one specific country because I, it's happened to me whether I've hired from India, Philippines, from Pakistan, from Nigeria. Just be sure the person can actually speak fluent English and can write it as well, if that's important to you. <laughs> it's important to me. And I've just learned the hard way. Communication is key. That's another tip I want to give you. So in your job description, always ask for a cover letter and always ask for samples of previous work. So any freelancer on Upwork will have a profile page. And if they have any work done, if they've done any work on Upwork, it'll tell you how much they've earned on that platform specifically. Just because someone hasn't earned money on Upwork doesn't mean that they're not qualified or capable to do the job. They just might be new on the platform. So. If you ask for samples, a person should still be able to give you a link to a portfolio of previous work, okay? I like to ask a very specific question because it helps to weed out people who don't follow instructions. <laughs> and I do that in general when I'm hiring for anything, whether it's virtual or in person. So ask a very specific question to make sure you don't get a canned response. So the rates on jobs, they vary. Again, Upwork will ask if you wanna do a flat rate or if you wanna do a pay by the hour. And it'll also ask if you're looking for someone who's a beginner, intermediate, or very advanced. Knowing, well, you, and I'll say that again, knowing that if you get someone really advanced who's been doing this for 20 years, their rate's gonna be higher than the person who's just starting out. Again, we spend time and we spend money. So you get to decide, hey, I'd be willing to put a little extra time in training a beginner who I can get for $10 an hour versus going with the super advanced person who's out of my budget. You just have to decide what works best for you. Another thing too is to not hire too quickly. Definitely interview multiple people and be sure you look at their work and be sure you look at their ratings. So when we talk about Fiverr.com, the link again is below to that for so that we can both get a little hookup, okay? Fiverr again is for these more one-off uh, creative things, graphic design, voiceovers. I mean, I've used Fiverr for so many things from voiceovers, video editing, graphic design, book covers, my book playing small back there. Um, I found someone on Fiverr actually, and he helped to edit and typeset my book. I was actually pleasantly surprised. So every now and then, but the key is read the reviews. Please read the reviews. That's the best thing I can tell you. Everything won't be a love, a, a love connection, right? But at least if you read the reviews, if you look at the samples of the work, you look at the turnaround time, you can make an informed decision. At the end of the day, it's all a gamble. We don't know how anyone's gonna work out. In the beginning of my <laughs> use of virtual assistants, I had a few that started out great and then they took advantage of me or stopped showing up, stopped returning my, my, my emails. And so it's just, it's trial and error. And the last thing you may be asking, well, how did they get access? You know, there's a level of trust that has to be given. I like to make sure I get some information from my virtual assistants, which is why I like to use third-party websites to make sure that they've already been vetted. Because my virtual assistant now, the one that I've had for many years, she has access to my email, my YouTube, <laughs> you know, but that trust has been built over the years. Don't give all your passwords away to a brand new virtual assistant as soon as you start working with them. Start with one thing, check up on them, check up on them, check up on them. Don't be a micromanager, but trust has to be built over time. And make sure you remember what it's like to be an employee if you've ever been one. I have. So I like to make sure I give bonuses when necessary. I make sure I show appreciation. I tell my, my team when they're doing a good job. As of this video, I have a virtual assistant in the Philippines. I also have an in-person assistant who comes to my house a couple times a month and who works remotely from home. And I also have a social media manager. So team Christine, as I like to call it, is very well-rounded. And I always like to make sure every one of my team feels loved, feels appreciated, 
and taken care of. And not just with uh, talk, with money too. At the end of the day, virtual assistants will tell you what their fee is. You can agree or not. And uh, you know, it's trial and error. I know I keep saying that. Just try, don't overwhelm them. Take it step by step, but really think about what it is that you're doing on a daily basis that you could take off your plate. I guarantee whether you run a full-time business, you're starting a side hustle, or if you're an actor, there are things that you do over and over again that you could teach someone to do. You can even have a virtual assistant for only three hours a week, two hours a week, one hour a week. And it might seem like, why would I just have, who would do a job for one hour? You'd be surprised. That's an extra $20 or $15. That's gas. That's a, that's a lunch. So you'd be surprised. Don't, don't second guess and think who would want to do this. Somebody will do it. It's an hour out of their day, two hours out of the month. Are you kidding me? That's a little extra side change. And it takes that load off of you. So to me, it's a win-win. Remember, we spend time or we spend money. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you want more of this and leave a comment below. Have you tried a virtual assistant? What questions do you have about hiring a virtual assistant? I'd be happy to make some more videos about this kind of stuff. Again, having help has helped me build a six-figure business and a thriving acting career and not have to worry about things slipping through the cracks. And I'm always searching for more things to delegate. So I want to hear from you and I hope to see you next time. Bye.